like some of you, I'm a huge fan of binge watching TV. But I hate waiting each week for an episode to come out. So I wait until towards the end of the season, and the plan is to watch one episode per day. Unfortunately, some of these shows are so good that one episode turns into three episodes. Now it's too late for me to go work out, right? So better luck next week. I also commute to work and strategically live 0.7 miles away from the train station. The idea behind that is that every day I would either walk or bike to the train station. So it's kind of awkward when the Uber driver mentions that this is the shortest trip that he's ever taken. <laughs> So you see, as adults, we make these types of decisions every day, and it's so easy, given the technology that we have available to us. But now imagine a whole generation of children growing up with this. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm a huge fan of、um, technology. It's allowed us to innovate in ways that we could never imagine. It's improved our quality of life, but along the way, we make little sacrifices. According to the Center for Disease Control, the number of school children facing obesity has tripled since 1970. Today, one in five kids ages six to 19 are affected by this. Now, to many, this isn't new news, but it's an alarming one. So, let me share with you another trend. There are 2.2 billion people playing games in the world, and every day this is increasing. We're actually handing babies iPads now. What if we can harness the popularity of gaming and use it to battle childhood obesity? Now, childhood obesity is a very complex issue. There's a variety of factors ranging from、um, social economic status, diet,、uh, to the environmental limitations. These are all things we need to fix, but there's no simple solution. Well, one thing that we can look at is how certain technologies are fostering a very sedentary lifestyle. More than ever before, there are more options for kids to just stay on the couch instead of going outside to play. Now, that's okay for occasional rainy day, but when it starts changing and developing into a lifestyle, that's when we have a real issue. For kids, our ordinary world seems very boring to the fantastic worlds that they have at their fingertips. So instead of fighting this trend, let's embrace it and flip the script. Let's use it to get kids active. Now that might seem very a contradictory thing, right? Gaming and being active, but we're already well on our way to making this a reality. And as society changes, I believe that video games will be a key role in keeping kids active. Now, before I go into the how, I want to go into the why. Why do I believe this? I've had the benefit of watching video games go from pong to the billion-dollar industry that it is today. And while I was at the University of Illinois, I had the opportunity to try out their state-of-the-art virtual reality cave. A friend of mine snuck me in there one night, and I was blown away. The graphics were rudimentary compared to today's standards. But I saw the power of video games so much so that I actually dropped out of school and started my own video game company. I was living the dream until we started missing milestones and we burned through our investors' money. I was devastated. But at the age of 19, I learned what it took to create games and what it really took to develop a company. Fast forward, I go back to school, get married, have kids, and everything is right with the world. That is until my second son is at 18 months. He starts showing signs of regression, and doctors later diagnose him with autism and low muscle tone. To make matters even worse, when my third son was born, he was only born with one functioning kidney. Now, a lot of parents they worry about their kids' health, but for me and my wife, this became front and center. And as parents of an autistic child, We always struggle with how to get him to actually interact with his brothers. We found one common thread: they all like video games. So now the trick is, well, how do we get them active? And we found it in a game called Just Dance. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you fall down? Oh, ah. <laughs> so, Exer Gaming has been around since 1998. The first introduction to this was a game called Dance Dance Revolution. It got players to get off the couch and move around, even for a few songs. Now, we saw the evolution go to the Nintendo Wii. Its revolutionary ability to capture player movement got kids so excited, and parents flocked and emptied the shelves on the store to buy Wiis. It's because they saw their kids move. Now, a lot of you are thinking, we don't need more video games. We just need to push more sports on them. I wish it was that simple. According to the National Alliance for Youth, they say that 70% of kids at the age of 13 stop playing sports in the U.S. If we take a look at the flip side of the coin, Pew Research did a study and found that 90% of kids from the ages 12 to 17 are playing video games. So we're looking at this trend that's changing, and we have to find new ways to adapt to this. And one of the ways we can adapt to this is to, to look, take a look at augmented reality and virtual reality. And one of the best examples of this in augmented reality is Pokemon Go. Players logged an astronomical number of 8.7 billion kilometers. That's more than the distance from here to Pluto. But adults and kids were wandering around in the parks, not thinking they're exercising. They were just trying to catch them all. <laughs> so, when VR came out, I was so ecstatic. I was thinking, oh, the cave, this is great. And as amazing as the experience is, it was still fairly a stationary one. I wanted to build something better, bigger, actually. I wanted players to play their favorite games, but in an untethered virtual environment. I wanted to give them the space to be able to actually move around. So my team and I, we worked countless hours for two years to develop a large-scale, free-roaming VR platform called MassVR. It allows up to 16 players to play in an arena the size of a hockey rink. And so it wasn't until the first weekend that we opened that I started talking to a mom, and she was telling me that she had booked this for her son, and that he does excellent in school, but she struggles to get him off games and to be active. Now, I can completely relate. My kids are now 13, 11, and 8. And so she said, look at them. They're running around, they're breaking a sweat, and they're off their phones. And so let's take a look at what she's talking about. So these kids, they don't think they're walking around for 30 minutes. They don't know that. They're just playing a game. They're running around. They're dodging bullets. They're rocket jumping. They're zip lining. They're just doing what they comes natural. And for parents, they say, it's mom approved. I see this over and over again in the coming months. And that's when I had the epiphany. I said, what if we took VR and we took eSports? And that is the solution to how to get kids off the, uh, the couch. Because in augmented reality and in virtual reality, kids drop the controller, and they actually become the controller. They're rewarded for moving around. And so if we can take that element and we can combine it into a new genre in eSports, now you have the best of both worlds. You have the physical uh, part in traditional athletics, and you have the natural desire to play video games. And so now, kids can't complain, it's not fun anymore. There are 292 million people engaged in eSports. Now the question is, how is it going to evolve? We're already talking about eSports being an Olympic sport by 2024. But I have a very different vision. I have a vision where if eSports leverages this new type of VR technology, we can have leagues and tournaments. Kids can actually practice daily uh, at their local VR center, and now they get the exercise that they would have not gotten before. Many experts believe that 
uh, gamers log 10,000 hours by the age of 21. That coincidentally is the same number of hours we, in popular belief, think that it takes to master a skill. That's 10,000 hours of what would normally be a very sanitary gaming is now 10,000 hours of active gaming. No longer is gaming going to be considered uh, you being out of shape. If we take steps now to, you, to utilize this new innovation to address issues like um, uh, childhood obesity, we can do so much more because games not only help in the kids communicate better, but they also help uh, form uh, critical thinking skills and help them work together as a team and foster creativity. Now imagine if all these arenas are actually linked globally. You're not limited to just social and physical interactions with the people around you. Kids in College Park can team up and play with kids in Paris or Beijing and form new friendships and actually bridge cultural differences. So my challenge to you today is not just for the developers or the future innovators, it's for the parents and grandparents out there. Open your mind to this concept and let's rewrite the narrative around video games and make it a powerful tool to help kids learn and grow and literally take a step in the right direction. And perhaps this time, we'll go beyond Pluto and into another galaxy. Thank you.